Welcome to our Northumbrian office midday prayer. Uh, let's begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish thou the work of our hands. Establish thou the work of our hands. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We believe and trust in God the Father Almighty. We believe and trust in Jesus Christ his Son. We believe and trust in the Holy Spirit. We believe and trust in the three in one. The psalm from Psalm 143. And we're reading verses three and four. The enemy pursues me. He crushes me to the ground. He makes me dwell in darkness like those long dead. So my spirit grows faint within me and my heart within me is dismayed. And Lamentations chapter 3 verses 27 to 31. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. Let him sit alone in silence, for the Lord has laid it on him. Let him bury his face in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him offer his cheek to one who would strike him, and let him be filled with disgrace. For men are not cast off by the Lord for ever. And our New Testament reading today is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 33 to 37. At the sixth hour, darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, Rama Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, Listen, he is calling Elijah. One man ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down, he said. With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. To be human is to be lonely. To be human, however, is also to respond. The human person has always responded to, to this pain. Sometimes it has moved us to greater depths of openness towards God and others, to fuller life, and sometimes it has led to us to jump off bridges to end life. Sometimes 
it has given us a glimpse of heaven, sometimes a glimpse of hell. Sometimes it has made the human spirit. Sometimes it has broken it. Always it has affected it. For loneliness is one of the deepest, most universal and most profound experiences we have. Even if you're a relatively happy person who relates easily to others and who has many close friends, you are probably still lonely at times. If you're a very sensitive person, the type who feels things deeply, you are probably to some degree lonely all of the time. Ronald Rollheiser, The Restless Heart. As a young Christian, it was said to me repeatedly that people have a God-shaped hole in their heart. And there is a truth in that, but it's also a, a, a bit of an unhelpful saying at times. Uh, see, I don't think it's a, a God-shaped hole that's in our hearts that needs to be filled, that somehow a human being is incomplete. But I do think that there is a longing in us for intimacy and closeness that all of the relationships of the earth and this life are struggling to fill. I think scripture opens this to us in a couple of ways. Jesus' own teaching about marriage and life in the new creation um, seems to imply that even the, re the deep and intimate relationship of marriage will no longer be necessary in the same way in the next life and my understanding of that is that that actually in this life all intimacy is about that desire that we have for intimacy with God and we seek as people to try to meet that need through other people and it's part of the reason why we feel so let down and betrayed when other people let us down and betray us. But what we really need is to develop that intimacy with God. And nobody else can do that for us. At no sermons, no pilgrimages, no reading program, nothing can take the place of trying to be honest and open with God in prayer and in our daily walk. He sees all things, he knows all things, he sees everything you think, see, say and do, and he loves you. We're going to continue with the meditation for today. Day 23. As the rain hides the stars, as the autumn mist hides the hills, the happenings of my lot hide the shining of thy face from me. Yet, if I may hold thy hand in the darkness, it is enough. Since I know that, though I may stumble in my going, thou dost not fall. Alistair MacLean The Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shade. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee, thy soul from all evil. The Lord shall preserve thee, thy going and thy coming, from this time forward and for evermore. Words taken from Psalm 121 As it was, as it is, and as it shall be, evermore. God of grace, God in trinity, with the ebb, with the flow, ever is it so. God of grace, O trinity, with the ebb 
and flow. A traditional Gaelic prayer learned from Alexander McNeil, a fish salter on Barra. You might like to pause the recording here to pray. And we continue with the words of the canticle. Teach us, dear Lord, to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. O oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy, that we may rejoice and be glad all of our days. And let the beauty of the Lord be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us, and establish thou the work of our hands, dear Lord. And the blessing. Let nothing disturb thee, nothing affright thee. All things are passing, God never changeth. Patient endurance attaineth to all things. Who God possesseth, in nothing is wanting. God alone sufficeth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.